So the reason to use one or the other is comfort. Um, if I go to a um, uh, warehouse and I buy a cheap computer and I throw a parallel port in it and I throw Max 3 on it, even if it costs $180, I'm done. I can plug it in, I'm ready to go. If I use EMC, um, and, and people, it, it's, it's not really what I want to say, and because it might sound a little bit demeaning, but it's, it's a tool for the whiz kids, um, because you have to be familiar with Linux, you have to understand how Linux works, you might have to be able to uh, edit files in the Linux environment. And, okay. Uh, so it is more com it's more complex it is uh, it's less comfortable but okay well that be powerful that sounds good there's there's more questions I'm gonna, I want to make sure that we get to but that sounds like it's a good a good, Go good basic overview so on the machine um, how many ounces per inch are on the mo on the motors uh, the motors ounce inches I don't really have a uh, figure for that because I calculated the uh, horsepowers. Um, the uh, uh, y the x axis has six horsepower on it. The y axis motor can deliver up to three horsepowers in the pulse, and uh, both motors, uh, both gearboxes are good for about one to two horsepower continuous, <laughs> which can pretty much tear every bit off. But the reason why we chose those over dimensions is a to test the servo drive, which we have co-developed with a Finnish company. Uh, which can also power big, uh, bigger machines, uh, which are not necessarily CNC machines. And uh, we clamp very different cutting systems onto that gantry as well for tests and trials. As I said, it's a prototyping machine, and sometimes you need uh, the acceleration um, to, uh, yeah, to have it function, so we sometimes need that, that force. But yes, I would say uh, realistically, somewhere like above 1,500 ounce, in, ounce inches for sure. Okay. Um, what What are the specs on your servos, like amps or volts for the mill? Uh, servos goes up go up to uh, uh, two 200, I think 280 volts, uh, and uh, go up to 25 amps. Okay. Um, let's see, so what are some other questions? They can be stacked, they can talk to each other, those drives, it's uh, quite amazing. <laughs> okay, it looks like a lot of the other questions we've been able to type back some uh, some answers to. Uh, let's see, are you, Anita, are you seeing any, any other questions that, that I'm missing? There was one from Seth, uh, I'm not sure if we fully answered that, uh, you know, about the uh, uh, toolpath control using curves rather than surfaces. Uh, we're not quite sure if you've answered it, so if he wants to uh, have a follow-up question, we're we're open. Okay. Um, let's see here. So here's another question: Can Rhino can be used with a rapid manufacturing machine like a SLA or an SDM machine? Uh, RhinoCam is for a CNC machine, uh, so we really don't interface with uh, rapid prototyping machines directly. Okay, let's see. I think that's just been a lot of questions answered, but I think we've we've taken care of most of them through typing. So. Um, yeah, I think, didn't you want to uh, show a little bit more um, T-spine wizardry quickly? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I guess if there's anything anyone would like to see specifically in T-spines, please go ahead and ask that. We do have a lot of um, videos on our, on our website, um, and maybe I can even, maybe I'll even take back the, the presenter, um, but if you, let's see. You go to our T Spines website. Um, we just barely added some new uh, videos as well. So if you go to T Spines for Rhino, um, we have some new new videos here showing how to um, quickly make uh, arrive at a shape and design with T Spines. Also how to how to work with T Spines to create smooth buns and transitions. 
Um, yeah, so if there are any specific questions, I can go ahead and address those. But, but otherwise, I would just recommend uh, going to our website and checking out our, uh, our various uh, tutorials. We have a lot of video, tut video tutorials here. Um, okay, it looks like a bunch more questions just came in. Um, future plans for for the Mac. Um, Rhino just barely, or I guess it's been about a year ago, they came out with the first versions of Rhino for the Mac. And uh, that's something that I know here at Teespoins we're looking forward to supporting. Uh, we have to wait a little bit because they, they don't have an API available for third-party developers yet. Um, but we're, we're really looking forward to when that's ready so we can go ahead and, and move these points over there. Are, it, are there similar plans at Mixsoft? Or? Uh, again, we are also looking at it. Uh, we're watching it closely as well uh, because, uh, you know, when Rhino goes over to Mac, uh, we would like to get an idea of how many uh, users out there would really like to get a CAM product out there as well. So okay. uh, we, like to, we don't like to be on the bleeding edge of technology. Let me put it that way. Um, so here's a question from uh, about the differences between version 2.2 and 2.3 in T-Spoins. 2.3 is just a free upgrade, so I would just recommend downloading that. Um, a lot of it, there's a lot of new languages with the, like Italian, French, Spanish that we're supporting, um, better grasshopper support. So I'd recommend just, just getting a free upgrade, um, and you can get that at our website. So. Um, Let's see. Here's another question. Do you have any experience with high-speed milling strategies? Either Rainer or the guys at Microsoft, any, any input on that? Um, uh, I'll have Rainer answer it. I think the question was more for the machining part, and then maybe I can talk about the Rhino Cam part of it afterwards. Um, I, if, if it's about uh, uh, those high-speed machines with like 20 to 50,000 RPM uh, spinning tools, no, no, we, we only work with uh, uh, modified bridge ports and, and, and the fastest we have access to is a Haas mill, <coughs> which has, uh, I think, goes up to 20,000, but where we're scared using that uh, because of coolant and aluminum issues, um, and no, no, not really. It's, uh, it's a realm where um, we haven't even had uh, uh, requests for. As far as RhinoCam, yeah, we're definitely looking at high-speed uh, machining strategies. We will have a module or at least the components of it uh, coming out in our next release, uh, slated uh, sometime in early next year. Okay, um, here's another question about Rhino 564-bit compatibility timeline. Um, again, this is the, the same kind of the same issue of just waiting for McNeil to have um, a stable API available, and I know we're looking forward to moving ahead with that as, as soon as that, that hits. And so I wish we could be more specific on the timing of that, but um, McNeil themselves don't quite know that. But my, my hope is in the next six months, maybe, but I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and just see how, how Rhino 5 comes along. As far as RhinoCam, we have RhinoCam running in 64-bit uh, already. Uh, it's, it's on a beta at, the, at this point, uh, but it will be available when Rhino 64-bit, uh, Rhino 5.0 comes out. So. Yeah, what we do here is, so we, we <coughs> create a lot of meshes with uh, ZBrush, uh, which uh, generates very, very dense meshes uh, for a lot of geometry, and uh, we're always surprised how quick uh, RhinoCam is uh, able to generate two passes from those uh, very, very heavy meshes. So even in 32-bit, it's uh, uh, possible to get a few hundred thousand uh, polygons in there. So here's a question about the best way to create a surface with holes in T-splines. Um, there's a couple different ways to do that. One is just to, with T-splines, you can just select a hole and delete it or select a face and delete it to make a hole. Um, if you want to get an exact, um, a more exact hole, then you can just trim it, and it will turn into a rhino trimmed nerves, but the surface will stay exactly the same besides uh, the hole.